um, wanted to ask, why does praying seem so difficult, especially for, you know, Christians, believers who, you know, just became born again and just gave their lives to Christ? You have mentioned that prayer is a communication. If I am friends with somebody, I would want to communicate with the person, talk to the person at all times. So why is it difficult to pray sometimes? Well, I think why it's difficult for some people to pray is because number one, they've not gotten the understanding of prayer, what prayer is, why you should pray and how to pray. Without understanding, prayer shouldn't be difficult. It should be a pleasure, okay. actually delight to pray. For me, that's what it is, you know. Um, and also because some people see it as an illusion, like they are not seeing who they are praying to. Yes. They are not sure if God is hearing them. They don't know how to hear back from God. Because communication um, is effective when there's a feedback. Like I said, I've prayed over times. I got results. Mm -hmm. That gave me more confidence to pray more, to keep praying, to keep praying, because I know that He's the only one I can pray to that will hear me, that would answer me, knowing fully well that I don't have any other person to go to concerning this situation. So I prayed to him. He, he heard me, answered me, just the way, you know, I, I'm, I was expecting him to, and he did. There are times you don't even get the result, the answers, the way you want it. Yes. Because he heard you, he, and he also hears you. So he would respond to the best the best way that it will favor you to suit you, you get the best result. So for those who think that prayer is difficult or um, they don't know how to pray, I would encourage you to keep praying. Okay. And like I said earlier, pray the scriptures, pray the will of God. You see it come to pass. And the Bible says in um, 1 John, 1 John 5, 14, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Okay. So if you're praying and you're not hearing God or you're not receiving the answers, is it is your it prayer, is it, is it according to his will? If it is, then he will most definitely hear you. But if it is taking time, like I said earlier, wait, pray again, he will hear. Okay. It may not be the right time. So prayer shouldn't be difficult. Okay. But those who... You know, just want um, just started praying, or you 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 want to make prayer a lifestyle. Be consistent at it. Love it. You may take. You may you may start with five minutes, ten minutes. Sometimes mom is wondering. My, my children are wondering why mommy one hour, two hours. You are praying. What are you praying about? Those them are not asking me. What is the problem? Do you have a problem? As in, this is your prayer. Will it ever stop? Will it ever end? Do you have a need? I don't have to have a need to pray. It's just what I love to do. You understand? So with that, over time, you find out that you just you just love to pray. In your car, in my car, I pray. I'm going out, I'm praying, I'm speaking in tongues. I get to the office, I'm speaking, they know me. I'm speaking in tongues. One day, sometimes they, I have prayer times in the office. Okay. Once they knock and they see that I'm praying, they'll go back until I'm done, they come back. It doesn't take, it doesn't, I don't have to pray at a stretch. You know, for me to hear God, because I've made it a lifestyle. Anytime, anywhere, I can pray. So with that, I encourage you if you if you feel like you, you know, you feel like God is not hearing you or you don't know how to pray, pray the will of the, of, of the Father, and you will see results. Thank you. And we pray the will of the Father by looking at His Word, yes. what His Word says concerning the situation, the time, the season. Thank you, ma'am. So also, how can we encourage people, especially women who have very stressful lives? How can we encourage them or what advice can you give them, especially when they're struggling to have a balanced prayer life? What can you tell them to do in order that they can begin to have a balanced prayer life? First of all, I encourage you to have a prayer schedule. Okay. Have a prayer schedule. Um, at the beginning, it may not be uh, you may not be consistent with it, may not look easy, yeah. but over time, if you keep at it, it becomes a lifestyle. It just becomes easy for you to pray. Okay. You know, it's just like um, you, 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 you're going to work or you're working. Mm -hmm. You're working. You know, you know that if I don't wake up by five a.m., I'll go late to work. Yes. So you 
set your alarm for to wake up maybe 4 35 a.m knowing that by 6 6 30 i'm done preparing by 7 i should set out it becomes a lifestyle over time it becomes your body even if your alarm doesn't wake you up your body will naturally wake you yes. so if you have a prayer schedule even when you don't remember that you have to pray at times i'm so busy suddenly i'll just have that solution in my spirit i'll just look at my time it's 12 you know it's my prayer time it's not because i was conscious of the time but my spirit is already conscious of that time and i'll pray so over time when you have that prayer schedule you keep at it you find that it becomes a lifestyle and becomes easy to pray okay thank you so much ma there's usually a confusion between there's usually confusion on fellowship and prayer now how can we move from fellowship to praying is there a difference between fellowship and praying yes there's different um prayer is a fellowship okay. in self prayer is a fellowship okay if i want to understand what you mean that by fellowship and prayer is to you that time of fellowship is where you worship you lift up your hands you're praising god you're calling him all sorts of names and all of that it's still prayer okay. it's not different from prayer that moment of worship is not different from prayer what that stage is like different stages of prayers that's like a first stage that stage leads you to the moment to the point where you find yourself you are lost you are lost in the place of prayer. Nothing around you matters. You are not even conscious of yourself or your environment. You are in a place where, in an atmosphere where it's you and God talking. Now, these things don't happen just like that. Mm -hmm. They happen over time. They happen with experience, with the time you spend in prayers. You understand? They happen over time. So. That those moments you find that you start making declarations, like I said earlier, you start prophesying to the future. You start, the Holy Spirit can even give you scriptures that you never thought before. Most of us now go back to my Bible and search those scriptures and, I'm like, oh, you know, just to confirm what the word of God says. And I came to that situation and I keep at it with that word. So, fellowship is prayer. Prayer is fellowship. Mm -hmm. Fellowship with God can be prayer, can be um, singing songs, worshiping Him. It's also fellowship, and prayer itself is also fellowship. So if 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 it gets to the point where, or you feel like, um, I want to pray certain prayer points to be specific, and based on your need, and you go to the scriptures and you find out from the scriptures what does the Word of God says concerning this situation. Why should I pray? For instance, it could be your finance. You're struggling with your finance. Or you feel like you want to increase in your finance. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper. Now that's a scripture. Yes. I hold on to that thing that no matter what I'm going through right now, no matter the droughts, no matter how it, it seems impossible for me to make this money, the word of God says, it is God's will mm -hmm. for me to prosper. That means if I'm not prospering now, it's not the will of God. So I'll pray the will of God to my finances or my finances and ensure that I prosper. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit will give you strategy. Mm -hmm. It will give you idea how to make the money. Mm -hmm. That comes in the place of prayer. Mm -hmm. And you find that when you implement those ideas, those strategies, you're not struggling anymore. The money comes mm -hmm. easily. So that's praying the will of God. That's praying scriptures. You can, uh, you can apply this to every area of your life. It could be your children. It could be uh, um, um, your spouse. It could be your place of work. Sometimes you ask, there are some, some things you, you, you want to ask or you, you're in need of. They may not be in a scripture written out, spelled out plainly. But when you pray in tongues, when you fellowship, when you get lost in the spirit, like I said, the spirit of God will tell you what to do because it's a feedback. He will tell you. Mm -hmm. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you how to go about that situation. 
you will tell you, you it may it may just clear the path. Maybe there's somebody that you know has been an hindrance to you. Like just just like it happened in the Bible when Daniel prayed. Yes. He prayed. God has already answered his prayers for days, but he was not getting the answer. Why? Because as a, as a prince of pressure, that's, that's, a, that's a different realm entirely where you have, you are contesting, you are contending with demons, with spirits, you know, that's a different level entirely. And then the Holy Spirit brings words or tell you specifically what to do, what to take out, those attitudes, those characters, those things that you need to let go so that your prayers will be answered. Because sometimes it could be hindrances. It could be hindrances, sin, guilt, mm -hmm. anger, bitterness. Those things can hinder prayers. Mm -hmm. And you're praying, praying, praying. You're not seeing answers. So the Holy Spirit will tell you what it is that you need to do or what not to do. So that the atmosphere will be free and clear for you to receive your, your answers. Okay, well, now that you mentioned Prince of Persia, I know nothing takes God on our way, right? So why did God permit the prince of Persia to withhold or hinder the answers to Daniel's prayers? Why do you think that happened? Well, I, you know, sometimes scriptures or uh, things happen in, in, in the Bible for, for us to learn, for us to learn. For me, that experience could mean that you know, God wanted to teach us that delay in prayer doesn't mean God has not answered you. You understand? Doesn't mean God has not answered you. Like Pastor said, delay in prayer can mean that at that time, it's not the right time for that prayer to be answered. It's not the right time Even for that Even after God had answered the prayer? Well... God has answered the prayer. That's a different thing. I'm just saying something different okay. now. Okay. God has answered the prayer and is not being manifested. Yes. Right? Like I said earlier, it could be a whole lot. It could be sin. It could even be the hindrance. Okay, something that God wants you to deal with to first. To deal with first. Okay. Before you see the results. You understand? So it could be something God wants you to deal with. So in the place of prayer, you get, like I said, you get sync with the Holy Spirit and it tells you exactly what it is that you need to do. Okay. So is there like a deeper level to praying? You know, like Anna in the Bible, when, you know, she was praying and it looked like she was drunk yes. and all of that, groaning and all of that. Is there like a deeper level to prayer and what leads to that kind of prayer? Hunger. Okay. Hunger for the word, for, the, for, for prayer, for fellowship leads to that. You're going to God in a place of prayer, not because you want to go and ask him anything. Not because you really have a need. Of course, Anna, Anna had a need that, you know, it, it felt like if you don't answer me, there's nothing else I can do. And she was lost in that prayer. She was lost. There are times that, you know, sometimes we even, we, we can make the will of God to happen faster than it would have if we pray. Sometimes people leave things to chances and say, if it, if it will be, it will be, what will be, will be. But with prayer, you can fast track things. Mm -hmm. No, so that moment where you find yourself lost in the place of prayer, that nothing else matters, mm -hmm. it's a deeper realm in a deeper level of prayer. I mean, realm in, in, in the spirit, a deeper realm of prayer. And that happens over time with practice, with consistency in the place of prayer, knowing that me is me and God. Nothing else matters. You are completely sold out at that moment. You are, you are, you know, in deep fellowship. No, you're just, it's just you and God. And Bible says like groanings which cannot be uttered. You are not speaking words anymore. You are speaking in tongues. You are speaking the word. You are speaking the spirit. You are speaking, you know, words that only the, only the Holy Spirit can, can even decode. You know, if you don't have the spirit of um, interpretation, you may not even be able to interpret what you are what you are speaking at that time. So there are different levels. That's a diff it's a higher level um, realm of prayer, and it happens. It occurs over time. You know, with consistency in prayer. 
finally, um, what are the benefits of prayer? I know you've listed, you've mentioned so many benefits of prayer, but if you could just list some of these benefits so our listeners can know the major benefits of prayer and why, you know, they should tarry in prayer. Okay, prayer, prayer has so many benefits that are inexhaustible. You know, prayer helps us to um, keep in sync with the Holy Spirit. It helps us to know the will of God, the will of the Father concerning a situation. Prayer is a fellowship with God, not just because you have a need. You want to fellowship. You just want to love Him in His presence. You just want to be with Him. You just want to hear from Him. You know, and prayer helps us to live outside of our flesh. Because when you're a praying person, you find out that there's some things you cannot just find yourself doing. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit of God, you know, has taken His abode in you. And it's more active in It's more active in yes. your spirit, you understand? It's more active in you. You cannot find yourself just suddenly lying, mm -hmm. cheating, fornicating. Those things don't happen to people that pray. If it does, it's a temptation. It doesn't just happen because over time they are, they, they, they built up their spirit man. They are more spiritual than physical. So prayer helps you to live a lifestyle, you know, based on the word of God, based on the scriptures, different outside of the flesh. You know, prayer helps us to change situations that are that seem very impossible. Like they say, the common saying that says, prayer changes things. Prayer can change any situation. I've seen that happen in my life over time. Anything and everything. There was a time my mom was, you know, so ill. Then I was still very young in Christianity. I was still very young. You know, I, I the only thing I knew to do was to, because my mom brought us up in, the, in, in church. So, um, I, I can say I'm a church girl. So, but I built this lifestyle to coming to Christ but knowing that this is a ministry where we pray, the word is there. So I built myself up, you know, along that direction. But there was this time I was still, you know, very young, a teenager. My mom was always sick. And being the only girl, I was one always taking care taking care of her. So it was it was sort of a stress and body. I didn't like it when she's when she's in that state. I'll be the one attending to but I just knew that I was I, I would only just tell God, please, just yeah. take this thing away from my mom. Just, you know, in those times, just selling the way. I was not really praying the way I used to pray now. I pray now. You know, but I found that over time, she came out of that sickness. And she, 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 she lived in divine health. Mm -hmm. You know, so prayer is, prayer changes things. Anything at all that it is that you want to change. You can ask God in the place of prayer. Every in every pray. situation, prayer. Prayer helps us to hear from God. Prayer is a powerful weapon, yes. you know, that we can use over any situation at all. And then prayer gives us strength. Yes, there are times, you know, you're down. A lot of things has happened. You feel like the world is crushing and, you know, on you. And there's no hope. There's no situation. When you go to God in the place of prayer, you come out strengthening. You come out, you can face that, you can, you can face that situation. God will give you word, give you courage, give you that boldness to face it. So prayer strengthens us. We are strengthened in the place of prayer. And prayer gives us wisdom and discernment. You're able to decide what is right, what is not right. You know, prayer also, I can say, is a gift. Not everybody can pray, actually. Not everybody can pray. So if you find yourself praying, Often you build that lifestyle. It's a gift that you should not show. I always thank God for the gift of prayer that I have. Oh no, over time that I built. Some people have the opportunity to pray, but they did not build it and they lost it. So for me, it's a gift that I cherish. So prayer is a gift for me. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. I have been blessed today and I know that you have been also. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who sent in questions that have led to this beautiful conversation. If you enjoyed this conversation, kindly do not forget to like this video. If you have further questions, please drop them in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe. God bless you. See you next time.